is my first time playing Counter-Strike 2 and I thought that I'd test and show you guys a few things in this because it's quite interesting and they've made some big upgrades to the game. So we're just going to play around and see what's new. Smoke grenades are just incredible now, watch. But the actual 3D smokes that fill out wherever you throw them and they adhere to the geometry. So for example, if I put one here, rather than it being a basic particle effect, it's actually a 3D object now. I think it uses boxes, but you can shoot through it. So you can make little holes in it. The closer you are to the edge, the easier it is. You get a little bit of visibility through the smoke there. I just can't get over how good it looks. It's amazing. Let me put a couple in the bomb site here and just fill this place out. Look at this. How awesome is that? You can kind of delete them as well for a second with grenades. So you can see through it and then the smoke comes back. Mind blown. Mind absolutely blown by that. And I believe that this is running on the new Source engine. So graphically, it looks pretty incredible. We've got real lighting. It's a lot brighter. The saturation's ramped up now. Look at the liquid in the Molotov ball too. Oh, oh yeah. Valve have done good there. Look at it. Oh my God, if I go like this, little bubbles in it. Look at the bubbles. Set this baby on fire. New fire effects. And it chars the ground too. Spreads out a little bit. See how it's made the ground darker and then that'll just eventually fade. Smoke coming out. The B bomb site. Oh, it looks so good. Oh, this water. Look at this. Oh my God. That is satisfying to do that. Source engine two, baby. Can I grenade it? Oh, a lovely splash effect there. Foam, bubbles. Oh, I check this out too. So when you're in the warm up mode, you can enable this grenade camera. So if I prime the smoke grenade, I can see where it's going to end up there. So you could get the line in CSGO, but I think it was console commands. It was a bit difficult, but you couldn't get the camera. But basically, the reason for this is that you can start up a private game by yourself with your friends and work out your own set of smokes. Come up with something that's going to smoke the CT cross, for example. Do it your own way. Come up with a nice Molotov. That smoke's are unbelievable. Look at that. Makes you wonder about the kind of crazy plays that you're going to be able to pull off with this. I love it. I mean, hopefully, in terms of gameplay, that means that one-way smokes aren't going to be as effective. There's probably still a few different scenarios where a one-way is doable, but overall, big improvement with the smokes. Something else I've just noticed here too, when you drop things, depending on what it is that you drop, it makes a different noise. So if you're on the enemy team, you can hear what I've just dropped. So this is a rifle. Heavy and quite obvious. And then this is a deagle. A bit different, lighter sound. But then also when I drop utility, so a smoke grenade. HE. And then the Molotov. They've all got different sounds. So if you were a player who was, you know, maybe holding this angle or something, you would know what the other team are up to. On this version of Inferno too, you can actually self boost on quad. I don't know if this is the best way of doing it, but you just jump on here, then across. So in CSGO, you needed a teammate to help you get up here, but it can be quite a good position to surprise people as they're coming up mid. In T-Spawn too, look at this. We've got bells that make noises. I'm sure you could make some epic bangers on these. There was a version of the game where you could do that, but they disabled it. As I recall, it's a new buy menu. It's going to take a little while to learn this. You built up 10, 20 years of muscle memory and now it's all different, but this is cool. So if you buy something, you can refund it. Say you make an accidental buy. Cool feature that. The sounds of the guns as well. This is the AWP. The guns in general just sound so much better than CSGO. Sounds more like a real gun. It's got a bit of echo and reverb. I think the sound changes as well, depending on what kind of environment you're in. 
Oh, that's good. This is the sound when you drop the bomb. Very obvious. Compared to a smoke. A lot louder. Oh, the lighting. CT spawn here on dust too. And, oh yeah, that's something about the lighting actually. So you can see your own shadow. This is really important because your shadow can give you away. So if I was holding door here, waiting for someone to push, they'd be able to see the top of my head. Don't know that I've got to tuck in a little bit. So I don't give myself away. It's a good feature. I have to show you this too. On Ancient here at T-Spawn, the water has got moss and algae built up on it. And it's a different kind of shader. So you can still walk around and displace it, but the algae actually comes back together. Look at this. Oh my god, that is... <laughs> that's so satisfying. I know it's such a simple thing, right? Mess all that up and then just... Watch it all reform. Oh, that looks so real. What the hell? I swear, if Valve ever bothered to make Half-Life 3, it's going to be the best looking game ever. What if I grenade it? Is it all going to reform? Come back, algae. You can do it. It's coming. It's coming. Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> Look at this, though. The lighting. Global illumination. Ambient occlusion. Oh. The, uh, it's so much brighter and the visibility is so much better. Yeah, I'm really impressed with the graphics so far. And this is maxed out too. Playing this on max settings. And I think I'm getting 360 FPS. So I've capped my frame rate at 360 in the NVIDIA control panel. I have a 360 hertz monitor and it looks like it's just sticking there. The CSGO didn't really utilize your computer that well. I mean, you could just brute force it, but the graphics card didn't really seem to matter. Look at this water. Crystal clear. Makes me want to jump in. We just mess about with this all day. This nuke looks so clean and shiny. <laughs> Check out the glass breaking animation. Wherever you shoot, it has an impact on how it breaks. Some more down here, look. Yeah. Someone's gonna have to clean that up, not me. There's no skyboxes either. So you know when I was showing you that smoke thing earlier where you can line them up? You could just make some absolutely insane smoke grenades. There's a really intriguing option too for shooting. So the default behavior in Counter-Strike is that when you shoot and the recoil starts to kick in, your bullets go above your crosshair. But over time, you learn to read the pattern a bit, you build up muscle memory and you can counter the recoil and get a much tighter spray pattern. But for someone who's never played CS, it can be a bit unusual because your bullets aren't going where your crosshair is. So they've added this option here. If we go to follow recoil, put that on. And when we shoot now, See the difference the crosshair is actually moving to an accurate position of where the bullets are very weird for someone who's played a lot of counter-strike but if you're new maybe that will give you a good idea of where your bullets are going and act as a means of learning how to control the recoil so for newcomers they might prefer that to begin with and then switch later on Yeah, pretty neat. I never really thought of a system like that before. I don't know if any other game uses similar recall to Counter-Strike and they've done that already, but yeah, props to Valve for giving people that option. I don't know how many people are going to use it, but it's there nonetheless. They've added some great quality of life features to in the menu and the options. So for example, if we go to the advanced video tab here, you now get a live preview of what the game's going to look like when you start changing some of the graphics here. For example, the model detail, the particle detail, you can zoom in, you can change the zoom level to go all the way in. You can really see up the nose if you want. And also, when you change stuff here, it doesn't lag your game for about a minute. <laughs> in CSGO, if you're mid-match and you want to change the setting, you're going to miss out on an entire round because it lags that bad. But now, it's just instant. It works great. This is a really great feature too in the keyboard and mouse settings, the chat will phrases. So let's say you're not in the mood for talking or you don't have a microphone or you can't talk. 
then you get the chat wheels and you can customize these. So you've got all these different responses, reports, commands. So if I wanted to change the top one here, I just click on it and change it to follow me. And you can completely customize these. It's a good accessibility feature for people who don't use microphones. Overall, it's a very strong first impression from me just on a surface level. There appears to be so many improvements here and they fixed a lot of the problems with CSGO that have been there for years. And in terms of what's going on under the hood, there's a lot happening there too with better servers, netcode, anti-cheat, etc. Feels like they're off to a good start. They have changed matchmaking to MR12 too, which is what it used to be many moons ago. So games are going to be a bit shorter and snappier. Now I'm going to play... Thank you for watching. I'm definitely going to be posting more CS2. Drop me a like below. Let me know your thoughts on this one. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.